Uh, you know, this this camera doesn't beep, so I'm going to have to flip you. Yep, it's recording. Oh, look, the buffalo. Anyway, uh, before I start today's video, I just, you know, because I haven't made one yet for today, but I'm just going to talk a little bit about that heater. I am not running that torpedo heater at my house. If you didn't listen to what I said, I said that I was taking the heater to my house in case there was an emergency. It's safer at my house, so if there's an emergency here at the farm, I can always go to my house and get it. Or if, for some stupid reason, uh, we have a problem with the boiler and I need to keep the house, you know, warm, so that the pipes don't freeze, that's an emergency. Or if, for some reason, my coal stove stops working or whatever, coal, firewood, I, you know, if I have no other choice or options, that's why I put the heater over there. Um, if the heater here goes bad, I can just go to the farm, go over to my house, pick it up, bring it over here. It's safer there. So, I am not running the John Deere heater in my house. If I was going to run it in my house, it would definitely, I would definitely have windows open because of this, the exhaust. I mean, it's bad enough I'm sucking that exhaust in the shop in here, but uh, kerosene isn't as uh, isn't as harsh as what, say, diesel fuel is. Kerosene burns easier. Kerosene is actually jet fuel. You know, that's what they use in jets. Refined kerosene. So, anyways, with that being said, I'm going to get my ass going again. i got to start a tractor up, warm it up. Then i got to walk down and get a truck and bring that up here. And then I'm going to go get loads of hay with my father and bring that back and load the other truck. So, you get to watch loading videos today. There so you I go. I guess I'll start the 7530. It's cold enough. Um, yeah, it's definitely cold enough. It's, it is 11 degrees. Oh, if I break my damn neck. 11 degrees, you know. So, I'm sorry everybody was disappointed about rolling coal, but there's a really cool thing here. These things have, oh, it just glow plugged itself, so. Wow. That was a failure. This thing don't want to start. Okay, so there is a glow plug gizmo, and it's glow plugging. Let's see if she goes. Normally it fires right off. I'm shocked. Well, I think my battery's weak. Shoot! Well, let's call that a 9 degree fail. Uh, let's see if the 8120 starts. The 8120 should start. You gotta understand these batteries. This is an original battery in this tractor. So, that being the case, it sucks. But 8120 has newer batteries in it. Um, yeah. So yeah, the 8120, she's a she's an old fire pig here, that sucker. Ready? This is an 8.1 liter. Let's see if she fires.
Okay. We got Mr. Tim. He just finished. He's just finishing up. Uh, I don't know what he's doing now. Maybe he's got some oil or something. Um, I just brought a load. To, we brought two wagon loads home. And we had a runaway wagon here the other day. This one right here. And uh, it's kind of a weird thing. I was. I went down. We had that hay rake that Teresa had broken in half. And, uh, yeah, he's going to back it up now. We had that hay rake that Teresa had broken in half on that wagon. And they unloaded it. Uh, Tim and uh, Dad unloaded the wagon. And they set it off to the side while I was working in the shop. So, I don't know, 20 minutes, half an hour, 45 minutes goes by. And I said, ah, I'm going to go out and take a look at that. Look at that hay rake. I haven't seen it. I didn't know whether I would need to... I didn't know whether I would need to just uh, uh, buy a new cylinder. I was just inspecting it. And then all of a sudden I heard this really rather weird noise. And it was like a tink, 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 tink noise. You know, like something metal clanking on a concrete. And it turns out it was the tongue of that wagon clanking on the frozen ground. Yep, Mr. Tim's got to, Tim's got to learn how to drive. So it's that metal tongue clanking on the ground. That's a spring suspended tongue, so it won't dig into the ground, especially frozen ground. So I thought maybe it would run a few feet and then stop, but that's not what happened. Uh, the tongue, because there's no pressure on it, it was just kind of skipping across the ground. Instead of it stopping like 30 feet away, it turned downhill, the tongue did. And I, there was an incident recently, and you can see there's some torn steel on it. I have to, uh, we just pulled it straight. It was this front three pieces, one, two, three. Uh, they were bent back pretty far. So you can see that the paint is off of that one back there. Uh, that's where it bent. So anyway, uh, all three of them did, and it tore. But anyway, uh, there was an incident. Uh, one of the guys that goes that one of the truck drivers down to Mushroom Barn. And he's not an employee of the Mushroom Barn. He's a farmer's employee, and uh, he ended up he got ran over by his own truck. Uh, ran over his shoulder and chest area, the front wheel did trying to stop his truck from rolling out into the into the road from the driveway. He didn't chalk it right. Uh, the theory was, or the thought is, that he tried to, uh, he was adjusting the brakes, and instead of chalking the wheels, he, he didn't get it. He thought he was level enough or whatever. Anyway, it wasn't chalked properly, and it ran him over. So I said, you know what, I'm not going to go running for this tongue. Uh, to stop this wagon, even though I probably could have, but if I'd have tripped and fell, this wagon is extremely heavy. There's 22 ton running gear under there. Plus, they got that 35 foot wagon body. There were no bales or anything on it, but that thing could have easily, if I'd have tripped, bending over to grab that tongue, I could have very easily been run over. Oh, here's Mr. Tim. He's got his Jeep fixed. Looks like he's got some silver chrome paint there. Look at that guy. See what he's up to. Ah. Ah. I can't open the damn door. Right. Fixed? Yeah. Oh, you got a seat belt. Well, now you can drive your Jeep again. Yeah. You feel good? I feel so, good, but I can't put the, I can't put this one in. Why? It's too small. Why? What's too small about it? Down all the way down below. Well, does the other one work? Yeah, it's still, it's still latches. All right, as long as it works, who cares? Yeah. All right, good. Congratulations. Yep. Going home? I gotta get gas. Go get gas. Everybody says you need a new vehicle. I keep telling them I want to get an F-150 Raptor. Oh well. Work hard. No. Mr. Tim, work hard. You can buy that. Why not? Get rid of that piece of shit before you kill yourself. That's what I've been saying for years. It's outlived its usefulness. So. Still get rebuilt. Get.
get the fuck out of here. So, anyway, I didn't want to die, so I just said to hell with it and let it roll. Well, that thing picked up enough speed going down across the field. And when I say enough speed, it was going 35, 40 mile an hour when it hit a cedar tree. Uh, the cedar tree was probably an 8 inch cedar tree and it sheared it off. It just sheared it off. Went through it and through the fence and up against another cedar tree causing a little bit of damage to the wagon. Not bad, you know. It's, I'd rather see a wagon go to hell. Uh, you know, across the field and nobody get hurt and then me attempt to save a wagon that I can fix pretty easily with a welder and a couple pieces of steel um, with, uh, you know, and me getting hurt. I don't, I don't really, I value my life a little more than that. I don't like dying, you know. I mean, we're dying from this since the day we're born and it's a numbers game, you know. A friend of mine says, it's just a numbers game. When you hit the magic number, you die. That's it, you know. It's like, oh well, yeah, you're kind of right. Some people's magic numbers in the 90s, like my grandmother, she's 90, she'll be 93 here in a, in a few days, uh, in a couple of weeks. And, uh, January 21st is her birthday, she'll be 90, uh, 93. So, but my Aunt Margaret, she turned 91, and then on December 26th, she died. You know, so her funeral is tomorrow, we have to deal with that. But, got lots of work to do between then and now, then and now, so... Anyway, with that being said, uh, I think I've, I think I've um, yammered on long enough. Uh, Timothy should have threw a block of wood underneath that wagon before he uh, unhooked it, and he didn't. And it cost it didn't cost anybody their life, but it cost me a little bit of a pain in the ass. So now I got to set up this tractor so that I can put the heater to it here. So, anyways, thanks for watching. Please comment, rate, and subscribe. Don't forget to talk. Check out Ag Talk in the Raw. I'll put the link in the description below. Thanks again.